Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Um, we are just going to go through some halo alkane chemical reactions. Um, and before we look at the chemical reactions, just something really quick. Um, you know, with halo alkanes, we have C, um, the carbon bonding with bromines, chlorines, iodines, and fluorines, etc., etc. And that's where the name halo alkane comes from because these, um, you know, atoms are halogens. Um, so you know, so that's where the name halo alkane came from. And the fact that you got the, you know, these different types of bonds, um, if you look at a typical example of a, um, of a halo alkane, for example, um, this is a polar molecule. Okay, why is that a polar molecule? Because you have a, if you look at the carbon, if you, if you look at the carbon as a central atom, and then you will see that you have a CCL bond, you have a CH bond, you have a CCH3 bond, and you have a CC bond as well, you know, so you, you, you definitely have some, um, the, 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 it's unable to cancel out the dipoles as the um, electronegativity of these atoms are different, okay? So the, the fact that these are polar um, is important, but you do need to um, understand that haloalkanes, despite being polar, they actually are insoluble in water. Okay, so this is something that um, people get confused because they will think that, oh, hello, it came up, you know, polar. So you told me that like dissolves like. So if something's polar, it should dissolve in polar solvents such as water, right? Um, but this is where um, you need to understand hydrogen bonding. So you need to understand the force of attraction between, um, so this is more NC level three, if you, Newton student. Um, so the, the hydrogen bonding is the force of attraction between um, these very delta positive hydrogen and the very, very um, negative electrons, and that's hydrogen bonding. And this force of attraction is much stronger than the force of attraction if you were to mix water and, you know, the CCL, da, 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 da. So they don't, you know, they're not going to do that because water prefer to hang out with water. Um, so how we have learned it in class is that we always talk about if something dissolves in water or if something dissolves in anything, that means the force of attraction. So you need to think about, so if we talk about solubil um, solubility, so if something dissolves, so you have molecule, like say substance A, substance B, and why do they dissolve to turn into AB? Why do they do that? Because the force of attraction between A's and the force of attraction between B's is weaker than the force of attraction between A and B. Okay, so they will, you know, this force of attraction is much stronger than the B's on their own or the A's on their own, therefore they are going to dissolve. So in this case, um, the halo alkanes and the water will not mix. Uh, they won't mix is simply because of the, um, the fact that the water molecules, the water molecules really want to hang out with water molecules. They don't want to hang out with the chlorines and, you know, the carbon, so they're not going to dissolve. Okay, so just make that really, really clear. So they are insoluble in water, and that means you are going to get two layers. Okay, so if, if it, what it means is that if you put, you know, your water and then your halo alkane, you're going to see two layers, just like um, oil, and which is an alkane, um, won't mix with the um, with the with the water. Okay, so you're going to see two layers. So that's the first thing I want to get out of the way. Um, the other thing that's really important is the degree of um, halo alkane. This is more at high school level. This is really not that important. Um, the degree of alcohol is far more important in comparison. But you know, it's important that you do know these sort of stuff. So, for example, if I have um, this guy. Versus this guy, and then this could be whatever. This could be whatever. I don't care. And then this will just be yeah. Oops. Okay. So the key thing is you just look at your um, chlorine. So my chlorine's here, and then you look at okay. So this Cl is bonding to a carbon, and it's directly bonded to one other carbon. So this is called a primary halo alkane, whereas this chlorine over here is bonding to a carbon that's bonded to two other carbons. So this is a secondary alkane, uh, halo alkane. And then here your chlorine is bonding to a carbon 
which is bonded, which is directly bonded to three other carbons. So this is a tertiary haloalkane. Okay, so this is primary, secondary, and tertiary. And that's something that they often ask. And um, you know, it, it, this is more something that's far more relevant at um, higher level, where you are expected to draw isomers, like, um, and then they'll show, all right, draw me a secondary al uh, haloalkane. You know, draw me a primary haloalkane. That's where you need to understand this. Okay, so we're just gonna get into the reactions now. So if you look at the reactions, um, haloalkane do um, mainly do two types of reactions. Um, one is, um, I'm, I'm going to start with the easiest one, one is substitution, substitution reactions, where you simply just substitute the functional group, which is the chlorine or the fluorine or the bromine, with another functional group. Okay, so for example, um, the easiest one that I can think of will just be something like this, if you have um, like a chloroethane and then if you react this with concentrated ammonia and then dissolve this in alcohol and what's going to happen is that you will lose well you won't lose you you simply just replace the cl with the nh2 okay so you simply just substitute the cl with an H2 and then you have HCl as a byproduct. Okay, so you simply just, and this is where what I meant by you don't necessarily need to memorize too many things, you just, just substitute. Okay, you just swap the um, swap the H, uh, the NH, um, the NH2 for, um, in this case, while well, the H's are just fillers, but the, hyd the nitrogen needs to bond three times, so that's why it has two H's because it's bonding to a carbon. And then the Cl group is substituted out, so you have gone from a halo alkane and then you have turned into a into an amine okay um, and you can also do this type of reaction fairly easily if i have i'm just using short chain um, you know oops i'm just using short chain examples because the rest of the molecule doesn't matter you just copy paste Okay, so if I have here, if I substitute this with KOHAQ, so what it means if I just say, if I just do this with any sort of hydroxide, any hydroxide is fine, you know, it doesn't have to be potassium hydroxide, any hydroxide is okay. Um, so the, the hydroxide is going to the OH group is the one of interest, and you have to do this in aqueous. Um, aqueous condition. So what's going to happen is that the OH group is going to do exactly the same thing. It's just going to substitute the Cl and then the Cl minus just comes off. Like we don't really care too much about that. We're more interested in the organic product. So you have gone from a haloalkane and you have turned into an alcohol. Okay, so if you have a secondary alcohol, uh, sorry, secondary haloalkane, you'll turn into a secondary alcohol. If you have a primary haloalkane, you'll turn into a primary alcohol. Okay, so that's where the, de and then the, the alcohol can further oxidize, it can further react depending on their degree of um, the hydroxy group. Okay, so that's a substitution reaction, pretty straightforward. You can um, simply just turn the the chlorines, the bromines into hydroxies or the amines um, very easily. Okay, so the more complicated one that I want to spend more time on is elimination reaction. So the elimination reaction, this is where you lose, um, you will lose the, well, you won't lose it, but the, the halogen and a hydrogen from the I don't want to do this the neighboring carbon the neighboring carbon is lost. Well they are lost. Uh, they are eliminated. So let's go with the word elimination. They are eliminated from the molecule. Okay, so what it means, let's do a simple illustration. So if I have a Cl here, I have an H here, and this could be bonded to whatever, this could be bonded to whatever, it doesn't matter, right? In, well, in this case, it doesn't matter. So what's gonna happen here, this is the functional group. So the functional group is always going to react 
and what it does is going to react with the hydrogen from the neighboring carbon. So what it means, what it means is that if you have a hydrogen over here, it's not gonna this it's not gonna be this hydrogen. It has to be the hydrogen from a neighboring carbon. Okay, it can't be from the same carbon. So what's gonna happen is that you are going to lose. Um, you're gonna keep everything else exactly the same. And this Cl and this H, they will be eliminated. And then what's going to happen is that you are going to form a double bond because you have lost a, um, a chemical bond for each of these two carbons. So they need a double bond. So they hold hands and they double bond, form a pi bond, and then everything's pretty happy afterwards. And then you have lost HCl. So because they've been, they've been eliminated and then you form a double bond. Okay, so this is more of a, you can just remember, is this is a CC double bond formation. So this is the opposite of an addition reaction. Addition reaction, so just remember addition. Addition reaction is breaking double bond. Breaking CC double bond, whereas formation, um, whereas elimination. Um, elimination is elimination is forming double bond okay so that's a simple way of interpreting this sort of stuff okay so let's give you an example let's start with something really easy right so if i have ch3 ch2 cl this is super easy and so what do i need this is something you need to remember this is koh alcohol okay and this is where people just well like, hold on a minute that looks rather familiar you just you know if i scroll up you talked about KOH aqueous being used for um, the substitution reaction. So this is where the condition is important. Okay, so the K when the KOH is dissolved in alcohol, there isn't enough OH minus concentration for you know for them to do the um, substitution reaction. So what it does is that this actually catalyzes a um, in elimination reaction so it's really important that you understand this is alcohol and i always tell people um this i say okay so you got your koh all right so if you have koh elk if you have, if you see my videos um on this uh, from the past exams you you would have heard me saying this quite often um so one is koh elk one is koh aq and this is what i always tell people like koh elk alcohol you know People get drunk on alcohol. What happens when they get drunk? They lose stuff. So they lose stuff, so they eliminate. Okay, so they eliminate and you make double bond. Okay, and when you when you drink lots of water, when you have aqueous, so that means it replaces the body fluid in your body because you need to get rid of some of the, you know, get rid of some of the body fluid. Um, so what it does, it replaces the water inside you. I also fills it up as well. Um, so this is substitution. Okay, so this is um, you know just, just substitution. You don't you don't make anything new. Okay, so KOH alk means elimination. So what it means, you are going to lose the Cl and you're going to lose the hydrogen from the neighboring carbon. So what's going to happen? So you can see I lost the hydrogen and then I lost the Cl and I double bond these things together. Okay, so that's an easy, very easy example. You can't get any simpler than that. Um, but what we can do is to give you a, another one that's a little bit harder. And this time I'm actually just going to draw it out so you can actually see what's happening. So I, uh, you know, if I, if I were to use a simplified format, I can just draw it like this. Okay, so I can just draw it like that, but these two are the are the same thing, okay? But I want to draw it out in the, in the format at the top because I want to show you what I'm going to show you next. Okay, so this is KOH elk. So if I do KOH elk um, in the alcoholic condition, now it's going to do exactly the same thing we talked about. And you always need to remember this, okay? So don't get confused. Always go for the function group. So in this case, it's a CL. And that means you, 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 you can't remove this hydrogen, right? That hydrogen doesn't work because you have to take a hydrogen from a neighboring carbon. So you need to look at this carbon that the Cl is bonding to and you find the neighboring carbon, which is either this guy or either this guy. So you can take away 
one of the edge from here that's why drawing like this or you can take away one of these edges from here and so if you were confused about the major minor products so this is another attempt at this i can simply just you know at the beginning i don't even think i just say all right i'm just going from from left to right okay i'm just going to take away this hydrogen so i'm going to take away that hydrogen that means i formed a double bond between those two carbons and then everything else stays the same okay or the other option is is that i i keep i keep this hydrogen i'm going to lose this hydrogen so i'm going to um, keep that so it's still ch2 and then my ch is still here and the this is ch2 because i've lost this hydrogen i lost the cl and a double bond here which is the product that we can see now okay so how do we know how do we know that which one is the major minor product so this is the opposite of um so this is the opposite of what we call um, Markovnikov's rule where we go rich gets richer um, and in this case we are going to go the other way it's not i've seen some some books called anti markovnikov rule that's not really it anti markovnikov rule refers to something else um, this is called the zaitsev rule the rule something like that you know okay zaitsev rule so what it what is what it means is that you are is is the opposite of Markovnikov's rule. So Markovnikov's rule is when you're adding molecule, when you're adding atoms into the molecule, you are looking at the rich gets richer. Okay, so the carbon inside the double bond, just as a quick refresher. So if you have carbon, carbon double bond, so you need to look at which one of these two carbons have more H's attached. Therefore, um, and then that carbon will get will have a higher chance to get another hydrogen okay rich gets richer but in this case when we're going the other way we look at these two carbons here we look at these two carbons that we are going to remove a hydrogen from so this is where the other half of the general rule of economics comes in place the poor gets poor so the poor people gets poor so in this case you just count how many carbons that each one of these have this carbon has two hydrogens this carbon has three hydrogens. So when when we are deciding which carbon is going to lose another hydrogen, and in this case two is smaller than three, so it is more likely for this carbon to lose that hydrogen, which is to form the double bond here. So that's why this guy is the major, and this is why, um, oops, this is the minor, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. I'll do another one. I'll do another one. So that's what data rule states. And so let's use um, let's use something a little bit easier, shall we? Actually, let's put it at the end. Let's just put it here. Uh, what if I just don't do it? Um, CH2, CH3, CH3. I'm just going to add some more carbons. Actually, um, let me put another. Oops. Let me put another CH3 here, for example. Okay. So if I have, it doesn't, again, it doesn't matter what we do here, right? Because the you just look for the function group. So if I'm still doing KOH ALK, all right? So you just, again, look for the function group. That is a function group. So that means that particular chlorine has to be eliminated. And then I have to take a hydrogen from the neighboring carbon. So that means I can either take a carbon, uh, sorry, a hydrogen from the carbon I just underlined, or I can take away from this particular carbon because they are the neighbors of this carbon. Okay, and then we can simply count, you know, this carbon right now has three hydrogens this carbon right now has one hydrogen directly bonded so it's more likely for this highlighted carbon to lose another hydrogen so i'm going to take away that first so i'm going to keep this hydrogen on the left but i'm going to lose the cl i'm going to lose that as you can see it's gone on my diagram and then i'm going to lose that h so as you can see this h is gone and then this is ch3 oops even though this is my typo, I think I was going to do two. 
right, CH2, oops, CH2, CH3. All right, so that's my major. And how do we name this? This is three methyl um, pentuene. And then for the minor, that means I'm gonna take take away hydrogen from the carbon on the left. So it's gonna go from two to three, as uh, three to two. It's gonna double bond, and then the the carbon stays. Um, the carbon with on the other side keeps the hydrogen, and then you have the minor product. Okay, so this is a minor product. So how do we explain this? All right, so how do we explain this? Let me just use that. Um, use this again. So how do we explain it? So this is where you need, you don't just say poor gets poor, all right? You don't say oh carbon number three is poor, and I would always highly recommend people to do this. Actually, you know, name it, um, name it first. So this is called two chloro, two chloro three methyl pentane, right? Okay. So that means we numbered it this way, carbon number one, carbon number two, all the way to carbon number five in my longest chain. So if I were to explain it, so in terms of explanation, I would talk about that the carbon, the CCL carbon, this carbon is carbon number two, okay? So carbon number two has to lose the CL, has to lose or eliminate the CL, and carbon number one and carbon number three has to lose one H to form a CC double bond. Okay, so and in this case, carbon number three has one hydrogen, which is you know which is less than carbon number one. Can you see it's much easier to just number the carbon and then just use the number to refer to it? Otherwise, how would you do it? Are you going to write the very the carbon on the very left? Come on, you can just replace that with carbon, carbon number one. Okay, so carbon number three has one H, which is less than carbon number one. Um, so, which is three H's. So therefore, therefore, it is more likely it is more likely for carbon number one to, oh sorry, it's more likely for carbon number three to lose a, another H because it has less hydrogens. Okay, and therefore, therefore this sucker is going to be, oops, this hydrogen is lost. Um, therefore, this particular thing is major, and the other one's minor. Okay, so that's how you can um, how you can do the elimination reaction of haloalkanes. Okay, so if if you want to practice, um, you can just literally. Um, you, I mean, we it it's comes down to um, just a, doing a bit of practice. Okay, so if, if you have seen my other videos, you can actually start looking at some of the reactions together. Let's say if I give you something like this, CH, CH3, let's start with butte. Okay, so this is where um, I can actually talk about, oh, there's another reaction I forgot to talk about, but it doesn't matter. Um, so I can talk about, um, you know, we can start drawing some of the flow charts. You can try this now if you want to um, so you can turn that to h2o slash h plus what does that turn into and then you can think about how does that turn back and you can think about all right so how do i if i react this with hcl what do i make what do i make you know you got your two major minor products and then today we talked about the major minor products okay so we talked about the two products can i actually let's say if i do the major if I do the major, if I do the minor, if I do the major, if I do the minor, how do I turn the minor into the, how do I turn the minor into the, to the minor? Like how do I turn this halo alkane to this particular alcohol? And you can turn it back, which but we haven't done that yet. Okay, and then you can even think about, all right, so how do I turn this guy 
back to this. So what do I need to use, which we covered in this particular video, uh, video. but it's more of a just getting your head around um, the, the major minor products and just getting your head around that organic chemistry. It's all about the functional groups, get the functional groups right, look for the reagents, think about what's going to happen, and then you should be on the right track. Okay, so hopefully this is helpful and um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. But um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.